We are here in a nice little street of Tokyo. I'm here with Andres Amire. Hi, Andres. How are you doing, man? Hello, bro. How is everybody? Cool. So we got a question from Rafael, and Rafael asked us, um, you know, what can I, uh, uh, students, you know, he didn't say anyone, just a student, right? You know, yeah. a student, maybe at university or, or high school or something, how can he improve or get into the computer career, the software developer career, while living in the countryside, right? So, you know, maybe he doesn't live in a big city and he doesn't have access to a lot of people. He might, he might not uh, be able to work for large companies. Okay. And, you know, can, can, can he still work uh, as a software developer? I will say certainly yes. If you are a person in this position and you have access to the internet, well, you're looking at the video right now, so hopefully you have reliable access to the internet, videos and whatnot, then I will certainly suggest you to get, um, to get in touch with an open source project. Uh, it's likely that as a student you have already uh, gotten in touch with, with a project as a consumer. You may be using a project, a library, maybe it's an application. And if you find that there is something that is not working correctly or as you would expect or this is a missing feature or something that you think, oh, perhaps I can help with making this particular piece of software a little bit better, then certainly do so. Um, open a ticket and start a conversation and don't worry too much if the person at the other side doesn't know your language uh, very well. So I'm speaking English, but my first language is actually Spanish and that's how it started. I uh, I will mix a little bit of Spanish and English when, when I was talking with people from far right away from Japan, from Hungary, when I was still living in Mexico. And uh, as we made it work, that has the whole point that you just get into that conversation. And yes, from time to time there might be a little bit of misunderstanding because someone uses a, a word in, in the wrong place. But don't worry, that's normal, that's going to happen. And the important thing is that you get try to get your message across and if when you get a reply from some other person don't if 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 you don't understand it very well just ask again and just follow that flow and make sure that what you want to communicate gets past at the other side and be able to receive uh, the message coming from the other side that's a pretty complete answer right and so, you know, let me, let me add a couple of things, right? So when you start with open source, you start very small, yes. right? A lot of people want to start with open source by doing like some big change or, oh, I use this software, I want to change something, I want to change the world with it, right? Yes, you're going to change the world with it, Eventually. but start small, yes. right? So people know who you are and they see that you're trying to help, you know, start by answering questions or, or you know, participating in the mailing list. Uh, fixing very very small things like typos in the documentation. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. uh, to place to start. For example, when I started contributing to open source, I found out that there was a missing method in, in one of the many utility classes in the Common Slack Apache project. And I sent a pull request. But in, the, in that time, <laughs> it was, we were still using Subversion, so I didn't even know how to create a software patch. I just simply said, hey guys, there's a missing feature, uh, can we fix it? I said, yes, please send me, send me a patch. So, okay, so I know how to fix code, but have no clue how to work with source control. And uh, I asked, again, what I said, engaged in that conversation, they gave me some pointers, and uh, eventually they accepted my contribution. And because it, it took, oh, what, a couple of weeks perhaps, and it was a small contribution, then I found that there was another problem, and I fixed it and I already knew how to send patches so one thing led to another and then 13 years later I'm here with my friend Bruno Sousa from, from Brazil working on the streets in Japan so you have no clue where a small contribution to open source is going to lead you but the one thing is for sure you will learn new things you will make uh, amazing friends and it will change the perspective of your whole world yeah since we're talking about your students uh in the countryside, in the small places, uh, you know, a couple of other things that you can do, right? You know, just uh, um, there is no excuses. No matter where you are, you have access to the internet, right? Like Andrew said, right? So you can participate on forums, you can participate on discussions, you can share what you know, right? You know, the little things that you learn, you can share. You can actually create a user group locally, right? Because then you can you can build up your community locally and and do things, right? So. 
you know, don't, 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 don't come with this that, oh, I live in a small city. Uh, if your small city is connected to the internet, right, you live in the big world with exactly. all of us, right? That is correct. So joining the conversation, joining the revolution of open source, and this is how we can make the world a much better place. Yeah, so this is Bruno Souza and Anders Amire directly from Tokyo. Ciao.